痛过无法。啊啊！ Do you feel that against your neck? This is a knife. If you struggle or make noise, then you know what happens. Yes, you've received a bit of training for this, haven't you? Everyone born into a noble family needs to know what to do when facing an assassin. Although in the end, the advice they give is a bit silly, isn't it? If the assassin speaks to you, stay calm and don't give them a reason to kill you sooner than they want to. The idea is basically just to stay alive longer and hope for a miracle. But I suppose miracles do happen on occasion. So I would recommend you to keep to your training and stay quiet for now. I'm going to do something I've never done for any of my targets. I'm going to take off my mask and show you my face. Shh! Don't forget the knife. But I'm flattered you recognize me. As a potential heir to your house, I know you had to memorize the names and faces of members of rival houses. But I'm a rather minor member of the Blankmont family. Even though my family and yours are bitter enemies, I think most members of your family wouldn't have bothered to remember me. You seem a bit confused. It's very simple. I'm the Blankmont's personal assassin. I've been officially adopted into the family as a cover. As you might have guessed, I was sent here to kill you. Technically, you're not next in line to take over the family. But your brother is... well... let's just be honest. He's incompetent. You, on the other hand, could actually be a threat to the Blankmonts if you were chosen to lead your house instead. I'm sure you're wondering why I even tell you all this. If I wanted to kill you, it would be easier to have never woken you up. But that's the thing. I don't want to. When I was assigned to kill you, I did a little spying to understand who you are. What your weaknesses were. Hush, I kill people for money. Spying on you isn't a thing to get upset about here. Anyway, as I watched you, I found myself infatuated. Well, for starters, you're not bad to look at. Some of your cousins are considered more conventionally attractive. But only because they center their entire lives around their appearance. You have a sort of effortless, subtle beauty about you. Perhaps it takes an assassin to appreciate, pleasing to the eye, but without drawing undue attention. And then there's your wisdom. The very reason I was ordered to take your life in the first place. You're practical, and you are willing to set aside the necessary things that others cling to. The fact that you alone have been arguing in favor of making peace with the Blankmonts in order to end our counterproductive feud. You don't care about revenge. You just want to move on. It's a shame the Blank Ones think that you're lying through your teeth to trick them. I know you really mean it, though. I put on a bit of show when you woke up to keep you quiet. But the truth is that I don't think I can bring myself to hurt you. It's one thing to snuff out the lives of greedy, cruel nobles who were a threat because of how ruthless they are. But to remove you from the world would be a crime. <laughs>
You still have a sense of humor, even at a time like this. Right. Fine. Both are crimes, but the former is merely a crime according to the law. The latter is a crime against humanity. I was given your contract quite a while ago, to be honest. I've been spending a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to do. And I finally settled on something. I'm given a bit of leeway in my job. As long as I serve the Bankmont's interests, they don't care too much how I do things. So, this is what I think we could do. I bring you back with me, and you become a Blankmont. It's perfect, you see. You're not a threat to them. In fact, you can be an asset. You won't have to die, and, well, we can be together. <laughs> sure. Technically, we'd be related if you were adopted into the Blankmonts. But you know how common that sort of thing is among nobles? At least in this case, it wouldn't be a blood relation. So, what do you think? It's not a bad deal, right? You get to live, I get a chance at you, and the blank wants bitter rivals lose power. Everybody wins. Except your family. Yes, I suppose that's true. I don't like where this is going. <sighs> and here I was praising your pragmatism. You wouldn't really be abandoning your family. You would just be... Well, okay, you would be abandoning them. But if I kill you... Then they lose you anyway. <sighs> so you're not going to budge on this? You insist that you'd rather die than join your family's enemies. Either you're more emotional than I thought, or much, much wider. Even if you refuse me, I can't bring myself to end you. I suppose in that way, I'm a bit emotional too. Still, you really should consider what I'm offering. Let's be realistic. The blank ones are the winning side of this conflict. We're wealthier. We have better connections. And, as you now know, we have a skilled assassin to deal with any dangerous threats. Do you really want to be stuck where you are? If you do inherit the family, you'll be inheriting the dwindling empire. It would be such a waste of your talents. You'll die poor after spending your life stressing and fretting about your situation. Who would choose that? <laughs> Barring is a miracle. It is a sure thing. Oh, well, aren't you clever? Yes, just like I said, miracles do happen. But you already got your miracle. Your miracle is that you're not dying tonight. Expecting more is just delusional. And even if that doesn't happen, think of what you're giving up. If you have a chance of getting your house out of the hole it's dug for itself, it will have to be through a political marriage. A forced one. But that's just it. I'm not blackmailing you into marrying me. All I want is a chance to convince you to choose me. In the Magmont's house, you have to bear the responsibility of leading. So it doesn't matter who you marry. You can choose whoever you like. And you know, I'm not a bad option. I have plenty to offer. I'm wealthy. 
intelligent and I feel like we could really understand each other in a way that others don't. This is the only way you'd get a chance like that. I... Well, I suppose, technically, I could join your house instead. But that's... I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But it's not as though I'm willing to drop my entire life for you. I'm interested in you. And I'm taking quite a risk by ignoring my orders. But I am genuinely loyal to the Vankmont family. Even if it's technically only your cover, I am officially part of the family. And I'm grateful for them. But we've only just met. I see your point. If I won't drop everything for you, then I can't ask you to drop everything for me. I enjoyed observing your shrewdness from a distance. But it's a bit frustrating now that you've turned it on me. Well, I suppose you've given me something to think about. You're more determined than my observations suggested. Hmm, I just realized that I didn't accomplish even one of the goals I came in here with. This is going to complicate things. Still, the fact that you can turn me away with nothing more than words intrigues me. I might even be more interested in you now than I was before. I expected to leave here with you, or with your head. I didn't consider what would happen if you remained alive and at home. Well, I would recommend that you don't tell anyone that we spoke. Even if I can't bring myself to kill you, I don't have such reservations about anyone else. Don't test me on this, or they'll be the ones to pay the price. We'll speak again some other time. You might not have gotten the best impression of me today, but I'll try to show you a better side of me next time. And do keep this in mind. At some point, I need you to stop being a potential threat to the Vankmonts. I can't kill you. But unless we find another way, I might eventually have to resort to kidnapping. I would suggest you help me find another solution as soon as possible. For now, I bid you good night. I hope you manage to get some sleep.